All right, and welcome back. According to my build log there, it's been since January of this year since I've really made any progress on these wings. I had initially thought that I would be almost done with both the left and right wings by now, at this time of the year, and getting ready to order the fuselage kit. Unfortunately, uh, with the move from Phoenix, uh, this is the first time that I've had a chance to do any kind of work on this airplane. And I gotta say, it's it's nice getting back into it. It's been seven or eight months, and it's it's been too long. So it's nice to get back into it and, and starting to work on this thing again. So what I'm doing here is, like I said, working on the autopilot, the roll servo for the right wing. And the first thing it's going to have you do is make the tie rod that connects between the servo actuator arm and the aileron bell crank. And what it has you do is to increase the inside diameter of both ends of this tube that you've cut to size, about an inch deep on either end. And what I decided to do is just use a wood block with the drill press to drill a hole the size of the tube to make sure that it's per perfectly aligned and uh, vertical and lined up with the drill bit of the drill press. And then used a set of pliers to hold it in place so it didn't rotate and then as I'm drilling out about an inch on both ends. And then the instructions, once you've completed that, have you uh, use a tap set to make the threads on both ends. I was fortunate in that I had a set of, of tap uh, taps in, in the garage, and I was even more fortunate that I was actually able to locate them. That's one of the problems that I've run into while trying to start back up on the airplane, is that in the move, I've, I'm not sure what I've done with a good number of my tools. Uh, they're packed up in various boxes somewhere, and so it's going to take me a while to finally find all of those pieces, and as I unpack... Uh, locate my tools and actually get into the real work of this. But in the meantime, I'm able to at least work on this servo. The tabs for this wasn't too difficult. Um, once you got it started, it was really easy to get going. Um, just made sure I used lots of cutting oil and that uh, you know you only make a couple turns before you back it out and, and then keep going. <clears throat> But all together, it's it wasn't too bad. I I don't have a lot of experience tapping out uh, threads, and so it, it was some, especially you know using it on aluminum, where I know that you can easily cross thread and and damage the threads as you're trying to make it. Um, it was some. It, it wasn't as bad as I'd thought. So now I'm finally starting to assemble the tie rod, uh, measuring, making sure everything's. To, to the correct dimensions, I believe it was uh, five and a quarter uh, inches between eyelets of of each of the tie rod ends. So you thread them in, um, and then just measure it from center point to center point of each of the uh, eyelets, and then thread it out as you needed to make it longer or shorter, and just making sure it's it's all set in place. And then you use locking nuts to. Uh, torque down against the aluminum tube and I think it's something like um, I want to say it's 20 inch pounds or something like that is what it tells you. Unfortunately I didn't have any uh, torque wrenches I could use. I had to get some of those uh, you call them the crow's foot or claws or whatever the, basically the ends of the box end wrenches that I can attach to my uh, torque wrench and get that value in there correctly and I'll do that at a later time. So now this is the actual servo itself. As I explained in a previous video, it's a Series 42 servo for the roll uh, servo. The pitch servo is a is the Series 32 servo. So as I've said before, um, every chance you get, you know, if you can work on the airplane, you know, do so. Every 15 minutes helps and and gets the uh, project done that much faster. So. This is a couple days ago after work. I decided to come out in the shop and, and do a little work while I could. And uh, so now what I'm doing is you remove one of the bolts, and the instruction tells you which one, but you remove one of the bolts, and that's where the support bracket is going to go. And now my son came out, and he decided he wanted to look and see what I'm doing, so I'm, I'm kind of educating him a little bit on what this does and uh, what this servo is for. 
and how it actually works. It's uh, my hope is to get both my kids involved and to get them excited about aviation and get them into the industry and get them into the field somehow, even if it's just to be a pilot and, and do this themselves or even maybe make their own airplane sometime later in life. My goal is to get them interested. So it's it's always fun to have them come out and, and take part. Um, so my son here, he's going to help me uh, attach the tie rod to the servo arm. And that's what we're doing here. It's it's always fun, like I said, to work with the kids. My my daughter helped build the wing, and she's even autographed inside the the right wing here uh, when she was working. I believe it was October last year, if I remember the date on the signature or where she signed it. But uh, if I can get my son in here and and get him involved, and uh, we'll get him working, and and eventually I want to get them to be able to start riveting and and do things themselves, so that that way when this thing's all put together. They'll be able to fly it, and they'll know that they helped put it together. So that's it's it's a fun goal. So now one of the things that I had done, and this is what I'm kind of contemplating here, and you'll see me removing, is I had installed a limiter on the servo, and basically it prevents the servo from over uh, over ranging and uh, locking the aileron in place uh, in the overrange state. It wouldn't be able to return it back to its neutral state. But when I did that, it interfered with the Molex connector and I couldn't install it. So I took it back out. And my, my thought is, my reasoning is, with that Molex connector there, it can't overrange anyways. Um, it runs into the Molex connector itself. So that kind of acts as the limiter. So I took it off and now you see I've, I've put the servo in place into the right wing here. And it just attaches to the bracket that's part of the kit. And uh, the instructions have you use uh, thread lock, the, the, not the permanent version, but the, the blue thread lock to, to hold the bolts in place for the servo. So it's got two on, uh, on the bottom of the servo. And then, like I said, here I'm working on the bracket that will mount to where you remove the bolt from to the top end of that uh, servo. At least the top end from where you're looking at it here, and that's what you see me installing now. So that's all of the braces for for this servo, and once you get that in place, then it's just a matter of uh, connecting the tie rod from the servo actuator arm to the uh, bell crank for the aileron. So there's really not a whole lot to this whole process. So it's uh, it's. It only took me probably about an hour and a half, two hours of actual work. Uh, and again, a lot of that is because I had to find a lot of the tools. <laughs> so it's uh, it's not a difficult process installing this. The only thing I have left is to uh, install all the electrical wiring and get the Mullix pins installed into the, the connector and then get the electrical finished up. But anyway, with that, I'm going to go ahead and leave this video here. Uh, that's the completion of the install. Like I said, it wasn't too difficult of an installation. For those that uh, have continued to watch these videos, I do appreciate it. If you get a chance, hit that like button. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe and you'll start seeing these videos as I put them out. We'll see you later.